Life doesn't have favorites, but it definitely picks losers. Which is something most of the Hell of a Boss cast can attest to. Doesn't matter if it was bad dads, being poor, or just witnesses, no one's life here has turned out exactly as they planned, with all they got out of the deal being mental scars and enemies. Hell of a Boss is stuffed with fun characters, but you would be hard pressed to find one that doesn't desperately need a therapist. So, in honor of me being bored, let's rank every character in Hell of a Boss by trauma, as they're already suffering for our amusement, so we might as well grade them on it. I advise what I think is the best metrics to group up and judge the denizens of Hell, with the bottom tier, the most mentally healthy, and no one's favorites being those with the boring childhood. Congrats! You won! Now please step aside so the people with angst can make this all about them. Which brings us to our next tier, Needs Therapy. Now I know this seems low on the list, and it is, but that's only because I think everyone can use therapy. And just because you don't hate your parents doesn't mean you don't have something you need to get off your chest. But if you do, and you got a lot of it, you might as well monetize, which is where the spicy book deal comes in. As yes, things did not go great, but maybe you've gone past it. Maybe this is how you cope. But either way, these characters are putting their past on blast, and it's just bad enough we want to hear about it. Then above that tier, we got a special one, which is The Source. As all this trauma has to come from somewhere, and even if they are a victim, that doesn't mean that they're a good person, with them bringing out someone else's worst. This is for all the people we hate and who traumatize our favorites. Or at least not giving us enough context to pity them. Unlike the next category and the people we feel the worst for, the ones who got fucked by life. Yeah, this one speaks for itself, and no amount of book sales can make it go away. Life didn't do so much as deal them a bad hand as it pulled a gun, shot them in the head, only to demand that they keep on playing. Things have not worked out. Maybe a character is doing better, maybe they've doubled down. Either way, they are traumatized, so R.I.P. Then just when you thought life couldn't get any worse, you have the last tier, the absolute bottom of hell. The characters who never got a break and are bundles of issues masquerading as people. And just to save time, let's just call this one Blitzo. As yes, this man was gonna sweep this list, no questions asked, as he always ends up alone. So then without further ado, let's try to figure out the list. This is all gonna be my gut reactions where I think each character belongs. I try to pick all the characters of significance and a few extras just to pad things out. But we'll see how this pans out, as I think this one's gonna be fun. All right, for starters, we got the guy who killed his wife from Ohio. After lovingly killing my wife for fucking the delivery man! You could argue this man was fucked by life by living in Ohio, but I feel like he really just screwed himself over. He is the source of his wife's issues, but they're dead, and we don't know him. And while there's a high probability of a boring childhood, he clearly needs therapy or he probably wouldn't have killed his wife in the first place. But speaking of childhood, we have the mom and the baby Luna punted like 30 miles. They were in the pilot. That first scene just to show us just how out of control Luna is right now, and show how quickly Luna resorts to violence. And if the baby doesn't need physical therapy, they are definitely gonna need emotional. Just like the mom, who is gonna need a lawyer to sue Luna. Like, I'm sure hell's full of lawyers, but if anyone takes him seriously, that is a different question. Alright, let's talk about the furry. Good riddance if you ask me, she'll never amount to anything much. Where the hell should Luna go? His first instinct, fucked by life, of course. She was raised in an orphanage that was basically a human-sized pound, fought the other kids and got treated like a product instead of a child. Who knows how often they were let out or even fed, with the grand prize of being no one's favorite 18 years in a row being getting thrown out onto the streets. Yeah. Luna is traumatized. That said, Luna is doing pretty great, all things considered. Yeah, she's got issues. She is a massive piece of work who lashes out at anyone and everyone. But she is aware that she has a problem, and she's got blitz. Luna was fucked by life, but on the downward swing to some general peace of mind. Maybe she'll go down to a spicy book deal later in life, but not right now. All right, next up we have... Hold on, let me Google this bitch's name. Miss Mayberry, the teacher who pulled in Ohio and murdered her spouse after she caught them cheating. But not before headshotting his hussy, and she did all of it in front of her students. Alright, this is a toss-up. Between needing therapy, as her life was perfect until that day, or the source. 
and she may have truly, truly fucked up these kids. At least you'd think that. But given how blasé they are after the fact, I think these kids are doing fine. They're probably just relieved that the shooting wasn't at school for a change. So I'm just gonna say the teacher just needs therapy. All right, now let's talk about the woman who actually lived long enough to be a mother. Moxie's mom, or what's left of her. God, where do you even begin? We have very little to go on. She seemed nice, loving, abused. We don't know how she and Krim hooked up, but we know how it ended. Krim was a piece of shit who wanted his son firing employees. His wife said no, which was a step too far, so he canceled her life subscription and made sure that their son knew it was him. And I'm still betting money that Krim has her horns somewhere mounted in his house, because of course he would. This woman may not need therapy anymore, but she definitely could have used a spicy expose about how she escaped the mob if she had the chance. And it just occurred to me, she's like the fifth spouse to be murdered in this show. Like, I know all the dads are trash, but marriage is just lethal. Follow up with something a little bit more wholesome. We got the mascot from Lululand. The knockoff edition. Don't talk to me. I know you're a pervert under there. Yeah. It's already confirmed that this man's a pervert, and he works with kids, so I'm just gonna put him in needs therapy before I finish that thought. Okay. Next. The Angel. Full disclosure, I only ever remember Colin. And the other two just disappear in my head. And I'm not even gonna bother to look it up, I'm just gonna add it in post. As I feel like that's about as much respect as he deserves. You know, I feel like he could use therapy. He got screwed out of heaven, which... Where do you even go after that? You've already peaked, they're gonna get jumped in hell, and Earth is a shithole. My only real question here is if this guy ever was human or not. As the cherubs are heaven's version of imps, the bottom of the highest ladder. So maybe they were born in heaven, which sounds like a boring-ass childhood to me. Like yeah, heaven is definitely corrupt, but I'm not letting these preachy wingnuts get any slack. So boring childhood it is. Have fun getting screwed out of heaven on technicality like the rest of us. Alright, next, Stolz's baby butler. This man was the closest thing Stolz ever had to a father, and he still didn't care. But hey, at least he was there. This man is either boring childhood from a long line of butlers or a spicy book deal about dealing with Paymon's bullshit. I might correct this, but given the zero enthusiasm he had for life that we call professionalism, I'm gonna go right down the middle and just say he needs therapy. Cause we've seen how this family acts, and if you're around them all day, you're gonna need the extra help. Now move on from one professional to the next, we got Vortex. <laughs> I guess, but my friends call me Tex. Honestly, dude seems chill, a hunk, unproblematic, no major issues besides how little Veraska is paying him. That said, he's also a hellhound in hell, and people can't decide if he's a pet or a person. So let's just send an appointment so that he can unpack all of that as at least he's got friends, which is more than some of the other furries can say. This man can say less, though. Get lost, pipsqueak. I'm talking to the lady. If the kids aren't traumatized, their moms will be. This sleaze has fucked up some people. The man unprovoked picked on Moxie and immediately started hitting on Millie, and I'm just gonna assume that's a pattern and he is a source of someone's worst day. But he still doesn't come close to what Paimon did, as it only took him 30 seconds. Don't bow to that one. He bows to us, idiot. This motherfucker is definitely the source. If Stolz has problems, Paymon is the answer. If he's not, solve for X, then whoop, it's him. A lot of what he did is just to force the upper crust lifestyle and expectations onto his son, but that's just an excuse. The man can't even remember his son's name, and he still ruined him. Nothing about Paymon screams mental health issues other than elitism. So let's just put the man in his favorite spot. In the upper half, but below all the people who are actually important. Maybe we'll get lucky and find out he's dead, but knowing Stolas' luck, he is definitely still alive. Also, just thought, Stolas lives in his dad's house. Did he give that to him? Or does Paimon just have a ton of properties he stashes his kids in so he doesn't have to interact with them? I am the one and only Fizzarali. Now this might be controversial, but I'm betting that Fizzarali got fucked by life. Like yes, he's living the dream that Blitzo wanted, he's an entertainer doing all these shows, adoring crowds, fame, fortune, and is actually funny. But here's the thing, the man is a cyborg and I don't see a scenario where he chose that life for himself. Like something happened. He either lost the limbs in an explosion that took half of Blitzo's face, 
or he was forced to do it for marketing. The man has basically sold his body to Osmodius and his soul to Mammon. And I feel like if you can take anything away from this version of hell, is that there are always unhealthy power dynamics in business. As if you're working for someone, they are most likely working you over. And I don't think Fizz is gonna be an exception. As for him to be at this status, there still has to be a lot of baggage. Even if he is a high paid performer, I don't think anyone really respects him, and I feel like he definitely has to carry that chip on his shoulder everywhere he goes. I also definitely see this being an angel dust situation where he's getting pipped out to high paying clients, which is a whole other level of yikes. Fizz is doing well for himself, but he is not doing well. We're just waiting for that episode to confirm it. But in lighter news, this hound needs therapy. Just trust me. And now we move on to just one set of characters who you can't say had a boring childhood because they didn't have one. Let's talk about Ralphie and the kids. The husband and children of the home record that got shot, I say these kids desperately need therapy or got fucked by life. But you know what? They're dead. And now they're probably just in hell. It's weird though for them because they're in a very messed up situation. They are saneness and they are Hannibal Lecter with people that they've skinned, but they are also very well adjusted. They are a happy, loving family, and I feel like they just need therapy. As yes, they have a very messed up lifestyle, but they are emotionally stable. But let's stop talking about the dead bodies to talk about someone who buries them, Sally Mae. Piss would you be if I bet on him dying? Now I got the same problems with her that I do with the rest of Millie's siblings. They all seem super normal, like minus the head count. So I'm just gonna play it safe, take the fact that she does kill people fairly on the reg, and say she needs therapy, as that seems about the only thing really wrong here. And oh, hold on yourself, Colin, and do not use the Lord's name in vain! All right, Colin. The one angel I feel bad for, as he is the team bitch. And if they don't respect you, no one at heaven is even trying. His friends literally threw him to the wolves. The man is not doing great. And now that he's been banned, I feel like he desperately is in need of a therapist and to talk with someone about his unhealthy friend group. Also, while we're here, the other one. Boring childhood. Absolutely. Unlike Stolas, who we don't even have to debate this one. Like, for real, the premiere already spoke for itself. <laughs> what a pathetic fucking man! <laughs> Stolas has been getting fucked by life since he hatched. I think it's arguable if he's on the same level as Blitz, but he doesn't have those same mental scars. From the vibes currently, I feel like Stolas has issues, he has his trauma, but it's all still manageable at the moment. If he can get away from Stella, he can leave with Octavia, there's a chance that Stolas can become relatively well adjusted, but those scars still run deep and he is trapped in a loveless marriage that his wife is going to kill him over. This man was fucked by life. And I don't think he screwed up enough to be the source of Octavia's problems. Alright, next up we got that one producer that died horribly. <laughs> needs therapy. He needs to chill out. Just like the child star storing cocaine. When this is my bias, but Shirley Temple here needs a book deal. All these child stars need them. These poor kids need a break to write down just how fame screwed over their lives. And tangent, I am praying that none of the kids who got casted in that new Harry Potter reboot have social media. If they do, their parents should be brought up on charges because that is basically child abuse. As this isn't just Harry Potter, where it's a beloved franchise that people are going to obsess and harass the kids over. This is gonna be a reboot that no one really wants, post we hate JK now-itis. These kids are gonna get ripped to shreds. And even as someone who loves to see projects with more diversity, my fucking god. R.I.P. to the poor girl that gets cast as Hermione that isn't bleached white. We've already seen what happened with Annabeth in that Percy Jackson reboot, but if they give us a black Hermione, I might actually pray for that poor child, as people are not gonna be cool about it. <sighs> Let's the lighter topic. Let's talk about Veroska's crew. They all just need therapy. We could break this down one by one, but I feel like they're all about on the same level. We know some of them are in healthy, loving-ish relationships, so things can't be too terrible. They're also the groupies of a rock star who is in and out of rehab. They've seen some shit, 
But if they were to write a book, it wouldn't be about them. Like, Vraska, I think, might deserve a spicy book deal. She has definitely gone through some shit, and her whole relationship with Blitza was a mess from jump, with their breakup being something epic, as she is not over it. Preferring to be bitter than better, she really needs to vent and move on with her life. She has a drinking problem, clearly, and I wouldn't even say she's the source of Blitz's drama, as he recognizes that he did her dirty. So she's just another failed relationship for him to beat himself up over. So Veraska dragging him through the mud wouldn't be a new thing. He's already doing it to himself. Next up, the only decent father in hell, Joe. Yeah How's my deadly little pumpkin spice doing? He's fine, seems decent, tough, not in love with his son-in-law, but nothing too egregious. A boring child in hell is still probably insane, but it was just the standard for wrath. In desire we trust in the house of Osmodius. <laughs> Trumpet. Oh, okay, this is a good one. Osmodius, the demon king of lust, most likely one of the seven deadly sins. This man fucks. If he fucks people over is something I can't say one way or the other. He probably causes a lot of suffering just from work. But on a personal level, he's just kind of a dick. He's fair in his assessments, and I'm really just waiting on that episode about him and Fizz's relationship to really make a judgment call here. So let's just say he needs therapy, but this one can definitely change depending on what we find out later. After that, we got Deary, voiced by Vizzy Pop herself. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Boring childhood like all the other cherubs. Stolas' other hellhound. They need therapy. He works for Stolas. Even the catering doesn't want to deal with him. They just want to give him the drink and not be here. As they know trouble, and speaking of which, Stella. Stolas, you know I like throwing parties. Plus, it's true, so you can come if you want. Now, we could argue that she was fucked by life just like Stolas. This marriage wasn't her first choice either. Well, it was, but she didn't have one. Stella, though, has consistently been terrible, and everything that she has done to Stolas feels like a power play to soothe her own ego and cause misery. She is the source of a lot of Stolas' current trauma, and if she cared enough to talk to her daughter, I'm sure she'd make her life miserable too. Octavia, by the way, I'm a little bit torn on, as I kind of think she just needs therapy. Yes, her family is a train wreck, and she'll grow up to write the meanest book about her mom. For all the attention the show gives Octavia's issues, it really just gives them depth rather than showing off their intensity. Her parents are going through a divorce. Her dad is publicly having an affair. Her problems are being dealt with before they become damaged, so unless Stolz flatlines, she just needs to see a therapist weekly. Alright, after her we got Loopty. This man, you know, shockingly well adjusted. The man is a cartoon villain, but dead or alive, he is having a blast. His only complaint about hell was that he couldn't wait to see his best friend. Some people will say he's codependent, but you can't buy that kind of love, so let's just put him in boring childhood. Unfortunately, we neglected to test the machine on the poor, like we usually do. Alright, ignore what I said, he is definitely the source of somebody's trauma. Next one, though, is a little bit more up for debate. The dog lady from Luna's Orphanage. This is a point where you kind of just have to parse out who's the most culpable for what, and as the woman is kind of just doing her job. This orphanage sucks. These kids are in cages, she is not helping them. But that's also the grind, and we don't really know her official role in this shithole. Like, she could be in charge and spending all the money on hookers. Or she's just a former orphan who stuck around, and her only job is to show off the kids. She's given up on Luna, that's for sure, and is part of the problem, but I'm more inclined to think that the situation is more the source of Luna's issues than the person who worked there. So let's mark her down for therapy and keep going. You guys are all fucking assholes. Oh, this fucking kid. He might be the only child who actually deserved death in this show. Like someone actually paid to off this kid. Which, question, if you die in hell, are you just dead now or do you get the immediate new game plus? Because if he doesn't get revived, he truly is fucked by life. I don't think he had a boring childhood. This kid clearly has issues. The boy roasted the shit out of the entire class, and something is a little bit off. So, let's just be safe and say therapy. Follow that up with Linda, Millie's mother. I feel like she's at the same level as her husband. Nothing wrong, nothing too bad. Raised some great kids, standard childhood. Next we got the sexy Tumblr man shark that worked for Krim. This man was murdered by Millie in a glorious death, and I loved his design. 
and just we don't really have anything to rank him by except for the part that he works for a sociopath, so I'm gonna assume therapy. Now to discuss my other favorite extra, we got Jesse, the bouncer from Ozzy's. You know, you have really nice eyes, daddy. This man needs therapy, as he saw Stolas go into the club with Blitzo. That is an enigma. That is a shock that he is going to spend months trying to wrap his head around. He was insane, and he is still trying to deal with it to this day. He's also an imp in hell, so yeah, his life was probably already screwed from the start. But if we're talking imps and implied trauma, Barbie Wire is the queen. Now based purely on Blitz is everything, I think it's safe to assume that she was fucked by life. Everyone that worked for Blitz's dad is not okay. Everyone that knew Blitz as a child is not okay. Now take care of the others. Next up, we got Krim's number two man, Alessio. He's the shark that knocks out Moxie, and is also the one everyone is shipping with Krim, which is good taste. I'm going to say he needs therapy, because sociopath, and if he ever finds out who the internet is shipping him with, he's going to have to unpack all of that. And while we're on the subject, Krim. Again, do we even have to debate this one? Yeah, fuck this guy. He murdered his wife, abused his son, he's also homophobic. Can't let that part slide. Definitely the source of all of Moxie's issues. And Moxie, yes, he was fucked by life, but he came out of it a sweetheart in spite of that. He's got some lingering issues, but he's also got Millie and morals, which is more than most of hell can say. He'll probably write a play about how he killed his father, life dealt him a shitty hand, and somehow he's still winning. Hey, why won't you love me, Alejandro? Spicy book deal, no further questions. You want to fuck this one too? Oh. Okay, this one imp that works for Stolas, Holy shit, he is just the chew toy for this entire family. Stella is chucking him against a wall to prove a point. Stolas, who's supposed to be the nicer of the two, is choking the life out of him while he's on the phone. This imp didn't ask for any of this shit. No one who works here gets paid enough for this. This imp needs to get out of here, write his spicy book deal about all the crap he's been put through. And at the very least you can say, the imp's got game. Like damn, the man can pull. He's almost on Stryker's level. Now Stryker's a weird one, as he is a hired gun. He's not 100% the source of anyone's problems, unless you count his victims. But they're dead. And the fact that he's hired by other people mostly, does make me want to keep him out of the source. He does seem to have some self-hatred issues, believing the other imps are pathetic and he and Blitz are somehow exceptions to this, and he's dealing with those feelings by killing rich assholes but he does it by working for other rich assholes. This definitely isn't healthy, but he can definitely afford therapy. Next up, Lyle Lipton. Now shockingly, this man has already gotten therapy. Epiphany was achieved, and he's still a terrible person. The big man over here is just like his life partner, Loopty, and has definitely ruined more lives than he can count. And we'll join him up there with Cash. Cash Buckso. Which if that's Blitz's last name, R.I.P. And apparently that was just a gag name that they gave him. Kind of like how Moxie's last name was a temp that ended up making to the final product. But Cash, yeah, we basically already ranked him. The Bad Dad Brigade is going strong and ruining lives. This man was willing to sell his son and use him as a thief. Cash may not be behind all of his son's issues, but he certainly got that ball rolling. Think before you act. And doubling back to those kids who watched the murder, no boring childhood here but they seem mostly fine, somehow. So we're just gonna give them therapy. All right, now for an actual adult. Agent One, he works for Dork, which is the demon hunting men in black that kidnapped and drugged Moxie and Blitz. He definitely has some unresolved issues about his mother. His fat mom is dead! But otherwise, it seems like he's fairly well adjusted. I feel like I can't give him a spicy book deal as his life just seems more sad than traumatic. Next, we got the man, the myth, the big dick to legend, Chaz or what's left of him. This man is not getting a book deal, and saying he's the source of all of Moxie's problems would be giving this man way too much credit. So Chaz, he just needs therapy, and maybe someone else can finally deal with his middle child energy. So let's follow the dead man with Elder Jaws, the bishop who said fuck it and shows life. Now I'm not gonna question how a demon became a priest or even how religion works in hell, and I'm just gonna say that this man had a boring childhood. He's seen some shit, but he is not losing any sleep over it. In that same vein, we got the pianist. Dude watched a woman get crushed to death and decided to go off. 
The man was a true professional who didn't have a drop of trauma on him. And after that, we get Agent 2. She seems to have less issues than Agent 1, but she's also possessed by Stolas. And shot in the dark, she's gonna think about that every time she closes her eyes for the rest of her life. And I feel like that's a spicy book deal if I've ever heard one, as that is proper trauma. Alright, next up on the docket, we got Martha. She's a serial adulterer Satanist, but she also seems to have life on lock in spite of that. I feel like if we could just put her in therapy, as there's no untraumatic answer about how you let your kids get away with this, then I'm not gonna lowball crazy. Also, we got that one dad who screamed at his son. God damn it, Nathan! You ruined another bloody photo! Why were you even born? Yeah, he's clearly the source of his son's problems. Like, for as much as we talk about the bad dad gang, this man is right up here with them. Like, there's no reason for it to be this uncalled for. And his son, yeah, he definitely needs therapy. Just flat out needs someone to talk to about his dad, and his mom ain't helping. I know this one's hard to see, but it's Millie's brothers. You know, the ones most of you probably mistook for farmhands. Surprise, they're family. And I'm just gonna put them in right next to their parents, as we don't know enough about them. As they apparently don't kill enough people for it to be a problem like their sisters, so they're probably doing fine. Now for someone who actually needs therapy, we got the mom of the kid who fucked around and found out. Please contact us and no! You're welcome! She needs help. Not book deal worthy, but her son disappeared only for his dismembered body to get dropped in her head by demons, on top of getting mocked by the news for being a bad artist. Which is terrible, but they're right. She's gonna need someone to talk to for a long while, and maybe an art class just for good measure. And finally, we got Wally Wackerford. And based purely on my bias, he's screwed some people. This man gives me big Thomas Edison vibes in that he is exploiting his workers. And just because he's not super successful right now, doesn't mean he's not gonna get away with it later on. Next, and this one's definitely going the fuck by life crowd, we got all the kids from Luna's Orphanage. They're getting all the same raw deal. Maybe some of them will get lucky and be adopted early, but a small part of them is always gonna be back here. Now, last but not least, we got Millie. Millie, I think, just needs therapy. She's easily the most well-adjusted of the cast, but she's also a murderholic rage gremlin who calms down with violence. She's the least traumatized member of the main cast. She's got her life together, and her lack of trauma does not make her uninteresting, but she's not gonna rank high on this list. As besides the anger issues, her family nagging her about working freelance is just being an adult. She's solid, she's cool, but she just needs therapy. Alright, and that's all she wrote. Now I'm sure I missed someone's fan favorite background character, but I'm also pretty confident in my list. I'm sure there'll be some slight shifts as we go on through the story, but I'm glad I did this. It was fun. Let me know what you all thought, and if you want to make your own copy of this list, I'm going to leave a link to it in the comments. So go ahead, have fun, post them wherever, but please, if you haven't already, subscribe. Like and share, and pat yourself on the back, take a breath, because you did it. You made it through another tier list.